Good evening, Art1280. We need to have a chat about lesson four. Lesson four establishes the foundation for modifying pixel or raster art. It is incredibly important that everyone is able to successfully complete the activities that are included in the skills practice. And I've just finished grading all of the submissions for lesson four and about 50% of the class did not do it right. And there's many different aspects of the skills practice. So not everyone got every question wrong or every exercise wrong, but it felt very much like follow the leader. Like people were referencing someone else's post to try to figure out how to do the skills practice. Um, so just to clear the air, I wanna go through the skills practice from start to finish. If you do not have a grade for the skills practice, when I send this out as a course announcement, it means that there's something wrong with your post and it needs to be fixed. I'm gonna hold off on grading anyone that doesn't have a score currently um, until Wednesday. And then on Wednesday, I'll go through and I'll add scores in. So if you don't have a score for your lesson four skills practice, something was wrong with the post. So you need to go back and uh, update your post after you follow along with my demo right here. So to start um, with the skills practice, you need to reference the lesson. So if you're not familiar on how to do the activities that you're being asked, you can always open the lesson. So we were working on lesson four. You can always open the lesson and have it um, open for you. I recommend clicking on this link here for Google Drive and bookmarking that page. And then you can open, you won't be able to edit. I have editing privileges, but you'll be able to open these slideshows and you can click through them. You can even download them as PDFs or you can print them as uh, worksheets if you want for taking notes. Um, but everything that you need to be able to do the skills practice is included in the lesson. Um, so then let's get started on the skills practice. Um, first, it says to download a sample image. You can always, in Art1280, use your own images, and I encourage you to do so. Um, when I tell you to download something from Open Graphic Arts, it's simply um, so that if you don't have access to your own images, you don't have to go find them. So you can get them by going to opengraphicarts.org. When you get there, click on stock images in the top right-hand corner. And then this is the first thing that students were doing wrong. Um, a lot of the images that were used were thumbnails of the image and not the whole image itself. So I'm gonna download this image here of this train station. I'm gonna do it both ways as a thumbnail. And then the correct way to download it is to click on it until it's large. And when you see the large view, then you can right click and save the image and save it to your computer. If we open these in Photoshop, so if I go to my downloads folder and I find those two images and I open them both in Photoshop, we'll give it a second dialog. So as soon as it finishes opening, You can visually see the images in the standard display view are different, but if we go to the image size dialog, so that's the image menu, and then choose image size, it will launch the image size dialog. You can see that this image is 1600 pixels by 1200 pixels approximately. And the thumbnail version, image, image size, is only 750 by 563. For this exercise, it's not the end of the world, so it's not something that I would mark wrong on your skills practice, but it's in your best interest to download the full size of the image. So I'm gonna close the thumbnail and I will work with this image um, for the skills practice. So that was step one. Um, then we are going to use the image size dialog to determine the largest size in inches the image can be when it's output at 72 and 300, and we are not going to resample, meaning we are not changing the number of pixels in the image. So when I go back to this image and I choose image and image size, right off the bat, it's telling me the resolution is 72. So the size of this image at 72 um, 
is 22.222 inches, um, not 22, 23.222 inches by 17.417. Note, the number of pixels is 1,672 by 1,254. This is the first answer. So this was one of the things that a lot of students did wrong. When you're comparing the size of the image at 72 and 300, you were only giving me one screenshot. I can't check to make sure you didn't resample if you only show me one screenshot. So on a Mac, you'll do Command Shift 5, change the screen capture. I like the one that says um, capture the selected window and take a picture of it. If you're on a PC, you'll use the version of a screen capture that you have for your computer. The second ex uh, activity that we have to do is we have to compare the size of this image at 72 and 300 resolution. So we're simply going to change the resolution to 300, but we need to make sure that we are not resampling. So you need to make sure that this resample checkbox is not selected. Now, if I change the resolution from 72 to 300, the pixels stayed the same. It's still 1,672 pixels by 1,254 pixels. But the size of the image is a lot smaller because we're squeezing the pixels closer together. So every one inch of the image now has 300 pixels, which causes the overall size of the image to be 5.573 inches by 4.18 inches. And then you would screenshot that as well. Okay, so that's all that you have to do for step one. You can put screenshots into the thread and you can just put the screenshots, that's fine, I'll be able to check the answers. Or you can put the screenshots and then you can write a little paragraph explaining the size of the image. What is important in those screenshots is that when I look at them, I wanna see that the number of pixels in the image is the same and that the resolution changes. Step two or item two. Answer the following questions. What is the significance of knowing the size of the image at 72 and 300 PPI? In the lesson, we discussed the significance of checking the size of the image using the image size dialog box because we are essentially asking ourselves, what is the biggest this image could be at the intended output? So if my intention is to put this on the web, I'm asking myself, how big could it be on the web? I don't have to use it that big. I can crop it, I can make it smaller, but I don't wanna make up pixels, so I don't want it to be any bigger than that. So really what the significance is, is we are testing to see how big the image could possibly be at web resolution of 72 and print resolution of 300. And then why is it important to not resample the image? We do not wanna resample because to resample means to change a number of pixels. When you capture an image with a digital camera or you scan an image or or you get an image off the internet, it has a set number of pixels. And you do not want to change that unless you're doing it for a purposeful reason. So you might want to make the image smaller, so you downsample the image, but you would be making that decision. But when you're just simply asking yourself, how big could it be? You don't want to resample. So let's take a look at what happens. Let's go back. Let's put this back at 72. So when we first opened the image, this is what the image size dialog box looked like. We had um, an image that's 1,672 pixels by 1,254 pixels. It was in 72 resolution. If I resample the image and say, I want this image to be 300 now, I am going to say 300 is the resolution. I'm not going to hit it yet. But what's going to happen is by resampling, it's gonna keep the width and height of the image in inches at 23 by 17, and it's gonna make up all the pixels that would be needed to fill in all the gaps. And it's going to be a significant number of pixels. So when I change this from 300, it goes, I can't remember what it was, from 1,672 pixels across to 6,967. Photoshop just made up thousands of pixels in every line of pixels that are in that image. And so the size of the image went from six megapixels, um, six million pixels to 104 million pixels in the image. And so you do not want to resample the image unless you are, unless you are purposefully wanting to change the number of pixels. And it's good practice to never resample unless you're doing so for a very specific or targeted reason. And so right now, what we're gonna do is we're just never gonna resample until we learn ways that we should resample. 
Number three, we're going to download a different image from Open Graphic Arts. You really could use the same one. It doesn't really matter. Well, let's grab a different image. And again, let's grab the full image by clicking on it and then saving it so it's the bigger size image. And again, you can use your own images or if you want to use images off of open source websites. Like I, I've been liking this, unsplash.com lately. Um, you can use images from here. The only catch is that once you search, the first chunk are going to be um, images from iStock Photo that you have to buy. And these are not open source, but if you scroll, um, people have put these images on and you could, like this one's super cute here, um, you can download these images and you can use them inside our class. Okay, that's a side tangent. So now that we have the next image we've downloaded from Open Graphic Arts, we are going to open it in Photoshop and use the crop tool to crop the image to be exactly six inches by three inches. Most students who submitted this did it right, so it's not the end of the world. Um, uh, it's not one of the, the hugely important things that are being overlooked in this submission. Um, but I'm going to review it because there were a few people that appear to have tried to crop it using the image size dialog. And then when we answer the questions in four, I'll explain why you can't do that. So we are going to um, crop the image to be exactly six inches by three inches at 72. And then we are going to use the image size dialog box just to double check and confirm that we have cropped the image to the size that we want. So when we open an image, file open, we'll go grab that from our downloads folder. You can crop the image using the crop tool, which is the one fifth tool down on your tools panel. When you are cropping, I highly recommend that on this drop down here, the default is ratio and it is cropping to a ratio. So even though right now it says six by three, it is not cropping to six inches by three inches. It's cropping to a ratio of six, six units wide by three units tall. So what I recommend is you always change it to width, height, and resolution so you can tell it exactly what you want. And so I want you to crop the image to either six by three or three by six. This is a portrait orientation image, so it should be three by six. So I'm gonna type three I N just to make sure it knows it's inches by six I N and then make sure that the resolution slash pixels per inch is resolution um, is in the last frame. Once I have all of those, make sure you hit the check mark. It will crop the image and then you can come up here to image and image size and you can confirm that the new size of the image is three inches by six inches at 300 resolution or six inches by three inches at um, 300 resolution and then I'm gonna undo that so that when we answer the next questions um, I can use it as an example item number four we need to answer two more questions one what happens if the width the height and or the resolution is not selected when you crop with the crop tool the answers for this question were all over the place the most common wrong answer was that you won't be able to crop and that is completely untrue it's worse if you do not fill in the width, the height, and or the resolution, Photoshop will fill it in for you and it is probably not going to be what you want. And it's usually based on like what is physically possible. So if you wanted to crop an image to six inches by three inches at 300, but it could possibly, based on the amount of pixels in the image, it could possibly be six inches by three inches at 3000 resolution, Photoshop would say, well, I don't want to get rid of pixels unnecessarily, so I'll keep all of the pixels. So when you crop, make sure that you enter with height and resolution. But also, if you leave one of the values out, which we'll do, we'll leave out the resolution in this case, you can still crop your image, still cropping to 6 inches by 3 inches. But now, if I go to image and image size, my image is 6 inches by 3 inches, and this particular image um, is 333.667 pixels per inch and so you don't get what you want unless you tell Photoshop exactly what you were trying to crop to. Okay, second question. Why is it not possible to accurately crop an image via the image size dialog? And I think a visual example will help this. So let's crop that same image again to 6 inches by 3 inches at 300. And let's say we want to crop 
so that this like archy thing is pointing to one of the rules of third. Maybe there. Okay. So we want to crop this part of the image. This is the part we want to keep. When I crop, what's going to happen is all of the information around this crop um, frame is going to disappear. So I hit crop. It's gone. I now have a new image that is exactly the size that I want. I cannot physically do that. Let's undo. I cannot physically do that using the image size dialog box. If I wanted to make this image six inches by three inches at 300, I could type 300, but it tells me that when I do that, the image will be five inches by six inches. I could try typing three inches to start like three inches wide. But when I do that, it tells me the image will be three inches by four inches and the resolution will be 500. I could try to disconnect the aspect ratio so that I can custom change the width and the height, but then I would be stretching the image. So the image size dialog box is basically just telling us what we have and what it could be if we move it around, but we can't delete anything in the image size dialog box. If I want to take the entire image and squeeze all the pixels together to make the resolution 300, this dialog box tells me I could print this image since 300 is print resolution. I could print this image as five by 6.673 inches and it could be of print quality. But that's all I use the image size dialog box for. If I want to crop an image and I want to get rid of part of the image, so I want to say I want to keep this part over here, this is going to be my new image, I'm going to delete all the excess. You cannot do that in the image size dialog box. So the, the answer to the questions are, um, one, what happens if you don't enter a value? Photoshop will make it up for you and it probably will not be the value that you want. And then two, why is it not possible to accurately crop an image via the image size dialog? And the answer is simple, it's just not what it's intended. It doesn't crop an image, it resizes an image. Um, I hope that that clears up any confusion with the skills practice. It is incredibly important that everyone in the entire class do this exercise to the fullest and get 100% on your skills practice because these are not skills that are, they're not optional. It's not like if you apply a filter and you don't like it, you could just try another one. When you're formatting images to sizes, it's incredibly important that you know the difference between resampling and not resampling an image. And when you're cropping an image to size, if somebody needs an image to be exactly six inches by three inches at 300 for a project, and they asked you to create that, you have to be able to produce an image that is the exact size that you need. Um, so if you did not receive a score for lesson four, or you do not have 100% for lesson four, please fix it by Wednesday, and I will regrade any new submissions for lessons four um, sometime during the day on Wednesday.